Okay, well, we can go ahead and get started. So what do you love the most about being a counseling psychologist? Yeah, um, so my name is Walter Malone. Um, 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 I think I love what I love the most about being a counseling psychology, a psychologist rather, is um, I think about my training. Um, we focused we focused a lot on on um, diversity, um, social justice, um, um, equity. Um, I think about my up my upbringing um, and some of the different experiences that I've had um, growing up. Um, and being able to uh, um, do this work within those constructs, um, social justice, social, social justice focused um, and thinking about equality um, um, and thinking about some of the social um, um, impacts of our society, especially now in today's world and environmental um, impacts um, that shape some of the difficulties in, ter in terms of functioning um, I really enjoy my, my particular training in counseling psychology um, because we were able to focus on those things and learn about those things and, and come to an understand of how those things can shape individuals functioning um, over a life, you know, lifespan. So um, yeah, so I really, I really enjoy, I really enjoy the emphasis that it placed on diversity and social justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Worth. So what does your average work day or week look like for you? It differs. So in working in a counseling um, counseling center on, on a college campus, um, my, my work week can differ from week to week and from day to day. I, I tend, I think with my schedule, I'm not always scheduling students at the same time um, or clients at the same time um, um, on the same days. Um, and so there's some flexibility in that, but not only do um, I spend a lot of time doing individual, I also do group, right? Um, and so there's the group, the group work aspect um, of what of what I do. Um, and so I have one group where I'm working with men, uh, men of color specifically called mannerisms. And so we're focusing on masculinity and racial identity in the, the intersection of that. Um, and so I do that um, on Mondays uh, every week. And so, you know, my, my client load fluctuates on Mondays. Um, um, and so I may have maybe two or three clients on, on a Monday. Um, um, I try not to do early mornings. When I come in in the morning, I try to get everything organized, look over what my client load is, uh, try to familiarize myself with Hey, what did we do last week? What are, what are, what are our treatment plans for this week? How do, how do we uh, wanna approach it? What are some things that I need to follow up on? Um, so that I'm in that space, so that when we sit down, we're ready to go and we're working on some of those therapeutic goals or we're addressing the issues in the moment in which they might bring to, to the session. Um, um, we do a lot of outreach at the center. So um, um, week to week, I could have a, a different out, uh, outreach a component that I'm doing, uh, which kind of alters my my schedule a little bit. I may be meeting with individuals to kind of talk about some things that um, they're experiencing with students. So we do a lot of consultation here mm -hmm. um, um, to talk about like, hey, how do we better how do we better identify some of the different factors that may be showing up with students um, that we we're not quite aware of. You know, we talk a lot about QPR training, which is question persuade. Um, and response training uh, around suicidality. And um, so there's a lot of different things that can happen uh, <laughs> throughout the week that can change from week to week. So yeah, what a variety, I, keeps you on your toes though. Absolutely, and that's what I enjoy the most. I yeah. really enjoy the flexibility. So. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And I find that I haven't, nobody that I've talked to has really done group work. So that's really interesting to hear about how, how you approach it and how you go through it. And we do tons of group work here at the center. Um, I think we have about um, maybe 23 groups. Um, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> focusing on you know, personal skills. Um, we have a depression group. We have a, a group that focus on individuals um, who may uh, be on the uh, autism spectrum. Um, we have a group on, like I said, masculinity, racial identity. We have another group that 
Um, um, there's another group I do called Color Coded. And so um, uh, Color Coded is a narrative, narrative therapy group. And we kind of uh, talk about the externalized factors um, that impacts them and in, in, in how that impacts the internalized factors and in their thoughts. But we do it um, by using um, their creativity and creative art. And so a lot of poetry, spoken word, uh, music lyrics, um, to really get at some of those narratives to ultimately um, create a narrative that, that, that fits their authentic idea of, of who yeah. they are. Yeah, and so, um, so lots of lots of group work. Yeah, yeah but that's really cool. Yeah. Very interesting to hear about. So what is something that you wish you knew before becoming a counseling psychologist? That's a really difficult question. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, I don't know necessarily if I wish I would have known something. Um, I tend to believe that things, you know, things kind of really work out in a way uh, that there's always going to be something missing and things of that nature. And so uh, I think what I didn't know was beneficial for me, you know, to go through the program and to learn. But I, I think, um, honestly, I think self-care. I think the being able to um, know how to do that for yourself. Um, I, I tend to look at what I do as a, a calling, if you will, um, mm -hmm. um, and and I enjoy it. You know, um, sitting with someone and being welcomed into um, their lived experiences. So I'm humbled by that, and um, and I think that there's a degree of experience. Um, personal experience that I have to be aware of. So checking in on my biases, understanding how I was socialized, uh, acknowledging my my identity, especially when I'm working with with women and how that might show up in the space, um, and always checking checking in on that. Um, I really I really believe that in order to be an effective therapist, you have to bring your whole self to the to the room. Some people might believe that, some people may not. But for me, I have to be my authentic self into the room. And if I don't do that, I'm putting on a facade and I could be potentially modeling something that can be damaging for a client. For instance, like if I don't share pieces of myself, which can be very helpful, you're not, you don't wanna share everything, um, then what if the client doesn't see me as a real person and don't think I have feelings and emotions? How is that gonna play out if we're working on something uh, um, around feelings and emotions, and they're telling me, uh, "Well, you're you're a therapist, so you're supposed to say that." I'm like, am I? You know, you know. So, <clears throat> being able to be in those moments and being in those spaces, understand my own biases, understand what I'm bringing into the room, and being authentic in that, um, um, while also taking care of myself, is is essential. Um, and and I like to show up that way. And I, so I, I I wish that some of those things I practiced prior to going through uh, not only the program, um, because I think that getting any type of PhD is, can be intense, but, um, but even afterwards, as you're sitting with clients, you wanna make sure that you're filling up your cup um, and you're taking care of yourself so that you can, you can perform at your optimal level and be present. Yeah, that is very important. To wrap this up, uh, clinical and counseling psychology share a lot of similarities and differences as specialties. How do you see your identity as a clinical psychologist, counseling psychologist, my bad, influencing how you were trained and approach your job duties? Yeah, yeah. And so as I think about the development, developmental perspective, uh, of counseling psychology, along with the adaptive strategies that um, are used to really influence um, individuals' um, lifespan um, and their experiences, um, experience their functioning, um, um, and how we look at the strengths of, of, of an individual um, um, and really try to uh, focus on those things so that we can help um, during that developmental process and that adaptive uh, and, and through those, some of those adaptive strategies. Uh, I think part of my identity as a, as a counseling psychology comes up in just that way. I think, I think of myself as, 
very developmental. Um, I love student development. I originally, uh, my master's was in um, um, student leadership. Um, and so I worked in student affairs for a long time. Um, surprisingly, my undergrad was in business. So, um, but it's all relative and I, I get to utilize all those, all those different components. And so um, being able to show up, like I said um, prior to, and be authentically me, um, bringing in my experiences um, outside of these the counseling practices, but also um, being able to help shape some of those developmental and adaptive strategies um, of individuals so that they can um, reach their optimal levels of performance um, in, in, health, in healthy functioning. Um, um, I think that that's what, what shows up in terms of um, my identity as a uh, counseling psychology, uh, counseling psychologist, I'm positive. <laughs> uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say about that too. Earlier, I, I talked a little bit about the um, um, equity, social justice, um, because as uh, I think counseling psychologists really, um, I think that's something that has set us apart from a lot of different counseling um, and clinical work. Um, because we really focus on that piece. Um, and so we're, we're always looking at the environmental um, um, the dynamics that's happening um, that has an impact on individuals and influences their attitudes or um, behaviors, um, societal pressures and norms, um, um, economic pressures and norms um, that play out. Masculinity, I talked about a little bit, and, and uh, the group work that I do, racial identity, all these influences are impacting individuals. Um, um, they can impact your physical, um, they can impact your mental. Um, and those strains can oftentimes be overwhelming. And I think uh, one of the things that counseling psychology has done is really uh, pay close attention to how different attitudes, different beliefs, and different systems um, perpetuate some of the, the, the illnesses that we, that we may um, that we may have and perpetuate some of the harms that we experience. Um, and I think that if we don't give attention to those things, then there's no way to, to reach like the healthy functioning that our individual um, is, is hoping to, um, to get. And so uh, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of things that go in that I, I, you know, I can, I can continue, continue on, but I think for the most part, um, um, that's kind of what, what I've learned and what's really shaped my identity as a counseling psychologist.